What's up airplane collectors? Welcome to a model airplane review. It's your host Ray. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the Aviation 400 at 1 to 400 scale Boeing 777-300ER in the new Emirates livery. In this video, I'll do an in-depth review of the model and its features, and at the end of the video, I will give my personal opinion about what I think of the model and whether or not I recommend it to other collectors. The box is a cardboard box at 19.5 centimeters long, 19.5 centimeters tall, and 5 centimeters wide. I'll show you around the box now. So this is the front. Here's the bottom. Right side, top, left side, and the back side. Included in the box is the model, assembled, painted, and ready to display, and a cheap plastic display stand. I'd like to trash this display stand for just a few seconds. The included display stand is obviously cheap, but it doesn't even fit into the model. The part that goes into the model here, it goes into this hole for the display stand, it's way too wide in diameter, so it doesn't even fit. So if I were to let go of this, I'd have a very bad day because the model would fall and get damaged. So you would need to sand this down in order to get it to fit. So, yeah, if you want to display this on a display stand, once you sand this down, it fits quite nicely, but if you don't want to do the work to sand it down, then buy a different display stand. Before I begin my review, I'll give you a quick 360 of the model. Fuselage length for this model is 18.5 centimeters, wingspan is 16 centimeters, and from the ground to the top of the vertical stabilizer, this model is 5 centimeters tall. Accurate to 1 to 400 scale. Actually, I think this mold is a little bit undersized. I did a comparison with a different Aviation 400 777 300 on the same mold, and it is ever so slightly undersized, not by much, but it is by a few millimeters. But it is overall accurate to 1 to 400 scale. And this model is a little bit heavy for its size because it's made primarily out of die-cast metal. We'll start the review with the fuselage. So the nose profile on this model seems to be pretty decent. It's not perfect. I do notice that the shape doesn't exactly match the 777-300ER, but it's not terrible. The, no the nose shape is acceptable, as I should put it. Paint application seems to be pretty good. It's just a singular coat of white paint, so really not too much going on. And printed detail seems to be pretty extensive. Now things start to get interesting pretty fast with this Golden Emirates title. This looks really good. It's painted in a reflective glitter that definitely has a different finish than the rest of the fuselage. So it stands out. The logo looks really good. As for the accuracy of the gold finish, I'm not 100% sure if it's fully accurate, but it's pretty good. It's nice to see. As we continue down the fuselage, you can see lots of printed detail to go around. Not much yet in regards to painted detail because most of this, well, it has to be printed due to the livery that Emirates has as well as the details of the 777. Here's the vertical stabilizer and I've also included the rear section of the fuselage for this shot. So we can see the flag here. So the flag detail here looks really nice. It's printed pretty nicely and I don't, I don't think there's much paint going on in here, but if there is, overall the detail looks pretty good. Now as for the vertical stabilizer itself, it seems pretty nicely detailed as well. I don't really recognize where the rudder detail is, so it might be filled in a bit with paint. But I would also like to talk about the top here. As you can see, the leading edge is taller than the trailing edge, and that is definitely not accurate. It should not be slanted like that, so the shape of the vertical stabilizer is a little bit off. I think this is a one-off issue, but I've been seeing this on a few models recently, and that's not good to see. Here is the right side of the fuselage. I'll show it to you. Now, everything I've said about the left side can also be applied to the right side. So, so far, decent, not perfect, but not terrible by any means. Moving on to the top of the wing here, or just the wings in general. The wings in this model are decently detailed. Molded detail doesn't appear to be present at all, at least not on the trailing edge. Like, where are those control surfaces? Oh, there they are. So the control surface details on this model are incredibly filled in. The only way you can see them is through the reflection in the light. In the light. So really, at only certain angles, you can see that. So that's not exactly desirable to see. Printed detail seems to be pretty accurate, though. It looks pretty good and consistent. Painted detail, obviously the paint application wasn't good with the control surfaces back here. But colors seem consistent and application seems consistent, so at least they did that right. The leading edge slats painted silver. That looks good. Here's our raked wingtip, just be careful with your fingers, it is a bit sharp. And on the underside of the wings, don't have much printed detail going on. 
Uh, paint application is definitely inconsistent down here because I can now see some of the control surface detail is very clearly defined here, but then over here it's really not. And what is that? Appears to be a stain or chipped paint of some sort. Yeah, it looks like chipped paint, so that's not good to see. And on the underside of the left wing, we have the aircraft's registration. So I'm not going to read that because it's upside down, and I really don't feel like doing the mental work associated with reading upside down right now. Now, here is the rear section of the aircraft. Here are the horizontal stabilizers. These look good. No complaints about them. The APU here, it is oversized, I believe. I think it is too long. So, and unfortunately, it is within the mold itself. It's not printed, so... Yeah, that's definitely an inaccuracy, but they did do their best to detail it, so I'll give them a few points there. It looks pretty decent. The shape of the horizontal stabilizer seems to have improved from the last, or from previous releases. The, I do remember, like, the curve from here to here was way more intense, so they, do, they did fix that, it appears. And down here, there really isn't that much, so I won't really complain about it. There's not much to complain about, so it looks good. Now, one of my favorite parts about this model, the engines. The engines of this model are pretty good. As you can see, the detail is quite extensive. Even on the pylons, it looks good. No paint splat, uh, splashes or splatters or splatters or drops or anything. So that's good to see. I have seen that on other Aviation 400 777s. Printed detail is 110% not lacking here. Lots of printed detail to go. Now, the part I'm probably going to harp on way too much for the, than what is good for this review, the fans, look at that. So, the fans, okay, so this one appears to be stiff. So, it is stiff. They are supposed to, sp oh, there we go. Just got to give it a bit of a push, but they do spin, but you can also see there are spinner spirals on there, so that is incredible detail to see. You don't usually see that on a 1-400 to scale aircraft, yet here we are. This one is a bit less stiff, so that is nice to see. So the fans, or the engines themselves, are incredibly detailed, and they look really good. Moving on to aerial features, this model has quite extensive aerial features in the form of 3D gemmed lights, sat domes, and 3D antennas. So I'll go over all of them. This is at the front section of the aircraft. We have our first 3D light right here. It's painted red. Looks very nice. It's a small gem, so that's good to see. This Aviation 400 thus far is the only 1-400 scale manufacturer that does gemmed 3D lights, so that is very nice to see. Definitely sets them apart in regards to detail. Here is an antenna and a sat dome. These look pretty good. They're pretty flush with the fuselage. They don't look... Okay, the sat dome is slightly misaligned, but not by much, so I won't harp on it too much. Here we have more communications domes here. These are also 3D. No other model manufacturers do these in 3D, so another plus for Aviation 400 there. Here we have a molded sat dome here. This is part of the mold, so it's not attached to the aircraft separately. And then two antennas right here. So lots of extensive aerial detailing. On the bottom here, we also have another gemmed light right in the middle of the Emirates title there, so that's pretty cool to see. And then also at the rear of the Emirates title, we have an antenna. And then at the rear of the aircraft, we have an antenna with stripes on it. Again, no other model manufacturer does stripes on their antennas like this, so that's another accurate feature that I really appreciate. Now let's go over the landing gear. The landing gear on this model are decent. They are painted an inaccurate silver color, but it's not the worst offense in my opinion. Aside from that, the gears are shaped quite nicely. One thing I do notice that, and they do, they do pivot, but something that one of my subscribers actually pointed out was that on this mold, the bar that goes here, or the strut that goes here is absent, and that is in order to allow the gears to pivot but there is a substantial gap left behind where there should be at least some remnant of a strut, which is, which is right here. This is the gap I'm referring to right here. So, yeah, not exactly 100% accurate, but hey, at least the gears pivot, so that is nice to see. If your camera would focus, that'd be great. They also seem to be mounted at a pretty decent angle. There we go. There's your camera focus. Sorry about that. Now the front wheel, this looks fine as well, again it's painted the inaccurate silver, but the wheels do roll, they're made out of rubber, and same with the main wheels if I didn't mention that earlier, they do roll and they're made out of rubber. So overall the gear are decent, not 110% accurate, but they're pretty good. So here's the front of the aircraft, wing flex looks good, if anything it might be a little bit low, vertical stabilizer is vertical, good to see, antennas and sat domes seem pretty decent, engine clearance looks good, cockpit window printing, slightly slanted, not terribly but that is irritating to see and gear balance looks good well that's the end of my review now time for my personal opinion so this model it's got a lot of detail going for it printed detail is pretty good it seemed consistent so 
Aviation 400 has been improving their quality. The mold quality isn't the best. Now, the reason I say that is because of the accuracy of the nose. It's not 100% accurate, but it's improved over the years. Because in 2021, the, I did get a model and the nose shape was atrocious. So it is good to see improvement there. The mold itself is slightly inaccurate due to the size. Like I said, it's slightly undersized, not by much. It's a negligible amount, but it is, it is something that is inaccurate about the model. So it's not perfect, of course. No model is perfect. But based on what I've pointed out, the issues aren't really that bad. And in my opinion, this model is still pretty good. It's a beautiful livery. I love the new Emirates livery. Not that it's better than the older one, but it definitely is pretty good. So I do recommend this model. Just it has its imperfections, and if you're not okay with them, then I suggest waiting for a different manufacturer to release this aircraft. But I personally do recommend this model to anyone who wants one. It's pretty decent. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Finally done with the reviews for the, for the day. I did seven reviews without a break, so I definitely need a break. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have anything you'd like to say below in the comments, feel free to do that. And that's all. Like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more model airplane content. Happy building. Happy collecting. Take care of yourselves. See you next time.